Hi everybody, it's Andrew Hutchings with you here again tonight. Still not a doctor. And I randomly had the thought because I was listening to a song and one thing rhymed with another and it triggered a memory in my brain and I thought about something. So this video is going to be about acid-base extractions of plant alkaloids or other things that you can do acid-base extractions on. Now, I know people, well, it's a it's actually something very important for chemistry and science. I know people also like to do them for illicit reasons. Uh, but regardless of the reason, I still remember when I did them in my chemistry lab that people have a lot of difficulty with them understanding what they're doing. When it's actually one of the most incredibly simple processes imaginable. So, and I don't think these videos out ahead of time, You've got your non-polar stuff, and you've got your polar stuff. And let's start from zero. Non-polar stuff is like oil, the polar stuff is like water. If you've ever put oil and water into a cup or whatever, or onto a plate, you know, or with vinegar, because vinegar is water-based, you would know that oil and water do not mix. Um, for the purpose of this video, let's assume that you know what something that is polar is and you know what something that's non-polar is or that if you don't it just doesn't matter but quick explanation polar things have charges you know like plus or minus and non-polar things do not so you take your plants and do i have any plants around here let's see i don't think so but let's say that this salsa has some alkaloids in it what you would do is you would take this salsa, and luckily for us, it's already like chopped up and everything, but just to increase the surface area some more, we would toss it in the blender. Where is the blender? Well, it doesn't matter where the blender is, but we would toss it in the blender and blend it up to increase the surface area. Or if it was something else, maybe we would chop it up, maybe we would grind it, Whatever the method is, the goal is to increase the surface area. Now, it's not absolutely necessary, but it makes the process a lot faster. So now that we've increased the surface area of our salsa, let's uh, put it back in the fridge because I'm not gonna do this with salsa and I'm not gonna do it with anything. <laughs> so the salsa uh, has lots of different things in it. Maybe I shouldn't have put it back yet. Some of the things are polar, some of them are non-polar and and there's these things that can change between polar and non-polar. Your alkaloids. Um, whatever your alkaloid may be, it can be in a polar state, or it can be in a less polar, closer to non-polar state. So say you have, well, I mean, you do have an amine if you have an alkaloid, but so you have your amine you know, your nitrogen with the hydrogens off of it. Now that amine can be in its neutral state or an extra hydrogen could be put onto it to make it positively charged. So when it's in its neutral state, it's gonna tend to go with the non-polar stuff. So you've got your big mix of your salsa or whatever it is, and you put it in your big container then you pour in your non-polar solvent, and you pour in your polar solvent. And your alkaloids, if they're in their neutral state, are going to go to that non-polar layer. So now that they're in that non-polar layer, well, the other stuff that's in that polar layer, we can just get rid of it because the stuff we want is in the non-polar layer. So let's just discard the polar layer. So now we have a non-polar layer with our alkaloid that is currently, for the most part, non-polar. So how do we separate it from all the other non-polar stuff? Hmm. So remember, the alkaloid can change between being polar and mostly non-polar. So what we do is we reintroduce the polar solvent and nothing happens because the alkaloid is still non-polar and so is the rest of your stuff. If it was not non-polar, it would have been in the polar solvent that we already discarded. So that polar layer you just poured back, the different polar layer of clean solvent that you just poured in has nothing in it for the time being. So then what you do is you take an acid.
acid, uh, hydrochloric acid, for example, because it can protonate the amine, get an extra hydrogen on there, positive charge there now, and it is now polar. So we add that acid, and then we shake up, stir up, whatever. I mean, you, sometimes you don't want to shake it up because it can cause emulsions and things can get bubbly and hard to separate. But basically, you want to make sure that everything comes into contact with each other. And because our alkaloid is now protonated and polar, it will go into that polar layer. And now it is the only thing in your polar layer. Because remember, earlier we already got rid of all the polar stuff that was naturally in the salsa. Then we only had non-polar stuff. But then we changed the alkaloid into being polar. And now we can get rid of all the non-polar stuff. And our polar layer only has that alkaloid. Now you could do it in the reverse too. You could polarize it first, protonate it first to make it polar and get rid of your non-polar layer. It doesn't really matter. But in the end, you arrive with a solvent that has only your alkaloids in it. Now it's important to note that it's not just one alkaloid. Most plants have more than one alkaloid. Maybe they have one for the majority of their alkaloid content, but they do have other trace alkaloids. So this is not a pure isolation of the chemical. It's a rough isolation, but it's an important step and an important process because it's a very low cost, very easy to do. You don't need fancy equipment. So once you have only your alkaloids in that solvent, you're going to crystallize it or you can simply evaporate off the solvent. Or you can precipitate it by changing its polarity. So if it is currently polar, we could add in a base to strip off that hydrogen and make it non-polar. And remember, it's in a polar solvent. So if we make it non-polar, it is no longer soluble in that solvent. So it will precipitate out and it can be poured through a filter and it will stay in the filter. Um, then, once you have it in your filter, it doesn't matter how you got there, but you would you would go, hmm, my alkaloids, depending on what state they're in, they are soluble in X, Y, and Z solvents. Possible impurities are soluble in A, B, and C solvents. So if solvent B can dissolve your impurities, but it's not going to dissolve your alkaloid as much, you would use solvent B, and you'd put don't want to pour a lot because even if your alkaloid isn't very soluble in it it only needs to be a little bit soluble if you pour a whole bunch of solvent and then you'll lose a lot of your desired product so you'd maybe get it in like a, a squirt uh, plastic pipette or you just pour it carefully and slowly but one way or another you put you wash it with the minimal amount necessary to get it all wet but you don't want to just get it all wet because if it just gets all wet and then the solvent evaporates, well, you still have your impurities there. You need to use enough solvent that it actually drips down through it, through the filter, pulling your impurities through the filter and out of your end product. So you've done that. And the next step, if you want it even more pure, would be to recrystallize your product because as something crystallizes and forms a crystal lattice, it pushes out impurities because those impurities cannot contribute to the crystal lattice. So you would find a solvent that your product is somewhat soluble in, but not super soluble. You would want to heat that solvent up, but you don't want to heat it up too hot because if you did, then that solvent would likely evaporate and you would simply have dissolved your product. The solvent would have evaporated quickly and you would be left with the same product having recrystallized way too fast to push out the impurities. So heat up your solvent, but not so much that it's gonna quickly evaporate. Then you wanna apply the minimum amount necessary to dissolve your product with its impurities. So after you've just barely gotten it dissolved, like you added drop-wise at, at the end, just like you added that last drop and it's all dissolved, so maybe you add another drop or two just to be absolutely sure it's all dissolved. And then what you do is you just let it sit. And then once it forms crystals, 
Then you carefully, very carefully, because you don't want to disturb the crystals, you transfer it into an ice bath, very carefully. And you just let it sit, and it will make some more crystals. And once you've gotten to that point, you set up your filter again, you take your crystals, or your solution with the crystals, and you carefully take it and you pour it through the filter. And then you take a solvent that your product is not very soluble in, but once again, that your impurities are. So remember solvent B that could dissolve the impurities but not our product very much. And once again, with a very small amount, you wash your crystals. And that, my friends, is how you end up isolating alkaloids from a plant of your choice. It's very simple. I know I took a while to say it because I, I know for some reason people have a hard time understanding this, but to really simplify it very quickly, you have your plant. It has polar and non-polar things in it. The alkaloid can become either. So, you, so your alkaloid in its natural form, it's going to be non-polar. So you get rid of the polar stuff. Now you only have the non-polar stuff. You re-add in the polar solvent, but of course nothing goes into it because you only have non-polar stuff. So then you use an acid and you add an extra hydrogen onto the amine to make that alkaloid polar. It goes into your polar layer, and now the only thing in that polar solvent is your alkaloid. So you get rid of that non-polar layer. Now you have the stuff you want. It's really that simple, and it's a process of purifying it. I hope you like this video. Please like, subscribe, and comment, and check out my Instagram, natural underscore true underscore fitness. Um, hope this helps you get better grades in your class. Hopefully you're not one of those cheaters who, regardless of not knowing this stuff, finds a way to cheat and get a good grade. Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoy this, because it's really cool when you can take what you want out of a plant. And I don't know why, but I had some chemistry TAs who were like, no, you can't do that with that stuff. And it's like, what are you talking about? I have done it. <laughs> People don't understand these extractions for some reason. It really makes no sense. You're just manipulating the solubility of the alkaloids or whatever you want and then isolating it. So you can hire me for coaching, diet advice, training advice, supplement advice. And I've never mentioned this in my other videos, but I'm actually a chemistry tutor also, and I've tutored many nursing students, biology students, all sorts of students. So if you wanted to, you could hire me for that too. I'm not gonna turn down your money unless I'm too busy. In which case I could say, hey, you can pay me more because I'm super busy. And then if you, you know, like use a logical process to determine, or maybe I have a zillion dollars and I don't need to tutor anybody. But if you need help with your chemistry, hit me up. I can help. I'm very good at it. I have been tutoring people since I was 16 years old. I was tutoring uh, college students, university students when I was 17. Lots of nursing school girls that would come to me and I wouldn't tell them that I was still in high school. Like, subscribe, and comment. Check out my Instagram.